Algebra 1 uh, is our note. So you should have your name up here to where you take a picture, uh, your period, date, and this should be true on your homework also. And then anything you turn in to me needs to be titled. So these are your notes for today. So let's see. Okay, so your notes. So you should write notes. So this is uh, section 1.4. Absolute value equations. Okay, any point, you can pause the video to catch up. Maybe try the problems before I show you how to do it. Make sure you know how to do them. So, today we're going to be solving absolute value equations. So, just a quick review of what you guys learned before in Math 8. Your teacher would ask you, Well, what's the absolute value of 5? And you would say, Five, and then your teacher would say, well, what's the absolute value of negative five? And you would say five. So in simple terms, it makes things positive. If they're positive, they stay positive. If they're negative, they become positive. The idea is also that you're talking about how far away something is on the number line. So five is five units away from zero, but negative five, is also five units away from zero. Distance is always positive. It's never negative. That's why these always come out positive because absolute values say how far is something from zero in the number line. And if it's in the negative direction, we still say it's, it's five away. If I drive to work 40 miles, then I'm 40 miles from home. If I drive back, I don't say that I drove negative 40. I say I drove 40 miles that way too. So distance doesn't care about direction. Anyways, simply, it does make things positive. But usually, um, we're going to, let's see. So let's do some examples. Solve each equation and then graph the solution. Okay, so you can have problems like this in your homework. So let's try a couple. Let's see, x minus 4 equals 6. So if we go back to this problem, we say, well, let's make an equation. The absolute value of x equals 5. You say, well, what could I plug in here? That would be 5. That would give me an answer of 5. Well, I could plug 5 in, right? I could plug negative 5 in, and it would also work. So usually absolute values boil down to two answers, two solutions. <clears throat> and so how do we how do we find those? I mean, that one is easy, and this might seem easy, but they're going to get harder, so you need to show your work. There's two situations. One, the inside could equal the positive 6, but the inside could also equal the negative 6 and then still come out positive when you take the absolute value. So we got to write the two situations. Drop the absolute values equal to the right side. Drop the absolute values equal to the opposite of the right side, the negative of it. Okay? And now you're just doing problems that you've been doing for a couple of years now. You're just solving for x. You know, add 4. Right? x equals 10. That's, that's an answer. Here we add 4. And we get x equals negative 2. So these are your answers. Okay, we get two answers usually on absolute value equations. Now we can check our answers like we did previous sections. So we could say, well, let's let's plug <clears throat> x equals 10 in in parentheses. And this is going to become a big deal for some problems later on today. So not only can you check your answers, so that one works. We could check the other one. So it's just good to see if you got the right answer. But there's there's a big deal coming. It's even more important. So plug negative two in, get negative six, and sure enough, it works. Two answers sort. Now the other thing you're supposed to graph it. So this is pretty easy on a number line, kind of like I did up here. 
you can graph that. So you can say, okay, well, since we got some big numbers, you can make the marks worth like two each, zero, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, negative two, negative four, negative six, negative eight, negative 10, maybe negative 12. Put some arrows on the ends, number line. So these are really just gonna be dots on the number line. So there's a dot and there's a dot. Those are your answers on a graph. So, all right, let's make it a little more complicated. So on these ones, you're going to have to isolate the absolute value first. Got to absolutely isolate the absolute value first. So these ones have an extra step of work at the beginning. You got to isolate the absolute value first. So here I'll show you. Print uh, absolute value 3x plus 9 minus 10 equals negative 4. So what what's what's wrong here? And we can't so we can't start. We can't say equals negative four equals positive four. We have to get the absolute values by themselves first. So anything outside of them, you got to take care of first. So we're going to take care of the minus ten now. Anything inside the absolute value, we can't start moving. The absolute values are still there, but now they're all by themselves. There's nothing else outside of them. So you have to do that first. Now we get our two cases. We get, well, the inside absolute value could equal six, and the inside of the absolute value could equal negative six. It would work either way. And now you solve each equation. So it's like you're having to do double the work on each of these problems. So we subtract nine. We show our work to get credit on your notes, your, your classwork, your homework. You got to show work. It's also going to help you get the right answers more often. So get that answer, I'm going to subtract nine. We're going to do one side, do the other side. Negative 15, negative six, negative nine. You add them together, six and nine is 15, but they're both negative, so it's negative. Divide by three. All right, we get our two answers. Let's, let's check them real quick. It's easy to check. And it takes a little bit of work. Always plug back into the original equation, just in case you made a mistake at, on the very first step. So if we check uh, x equals negative 1, plug negative 1 in. And then we get negative 3 plus 9 is 6. And that would be 6 minus 10. And 6 minus 10 is negative 4 equals negative 4. It works. The other one should work also. x equals negative 5. So we plug it in. 3 parentheses negative 5 plus 9 plus 10. It's going to be negative 15 minus 9 is negative 6. And that's going to give you positive 6. And it works. Okay. All right. Let's make it a little more interesting. What if you have two absolute values in the same equation? How do we deal with that? Okay. So we have absolute value of x plus 8 equals absolute value of 2x plus 1. So it's kind of like... It's kind of like what we've just been doing. You say you drop the absolute values. So you can get two situations. Drop the absolute values equal to the right side. Drop its absolute values. Drop the absolute values equal to the negative of the other side. Now it's the, op it's the opposite of it. So you got to distribute that negative. So if it helps, you could do a negative in front of it first. You got to make the whole thing negative. But these are going to be your two cases. So now you're going to solve them. We got x's on both sides. We get the x's together on the same side, either side. Negative 1x. Subtract 8. Still negative in front of the x. Now the way to get rid of a negative is the thing is like negative 1 times. You divide by negative 1. 
So there's one answer. <clears throat> Here, we got to distribute this. So it's going to be x plus 8 equals negative 2x minus 1. And now we want to get our x's together on the same side. Get rid of them all inside. Get rid of, and then now start to try and solve for x. Get x by itself. Subtract a from all sides. Divide both sides by 3. x equals negative 3. Now we can check these answers. Let's try it. You guys have a lot of time in class today to do 11 problems, so you have time to check them. So we're going to plug them back into the original equation and see if they work. They should both work. Two of them should work. So if we plug 7 in, now we plug 7 in, we just check one of them at a time. We plug 7 in everywhere you see the x. So that's going to be 15. 2 times 7 is 14. Plus 1 is 15. And the absolute value of 15 is 15. And the absolute value of 15 is 15. And it works. Now, I'm making a big deal about this because I'm about to show you another example where this is not going to work and you did everything right and something else is going on. We could check the other one. So this was x equals 7. Let's check x equals negative 3. Because we have two answers, it might be good to label the work for the check, like which one was which. So we plug negative 3 in to the original equation, wherever you see x. Okay, so that's going to be 5. That's going to be negative 5, but the absolute value is 5. It's 5. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5, and it works. But here's, here's, here's the kicker. This one's going to be weird. Extraneous solutions. Extraneous solutions are like extra solutions that don't actually make sense, but you did everything right. So they're, they're answers that get created when you do the right steps, but don't actually work. And on certain kinds of problems, bad answers can be created from good work. So I'll show you. Let's do an example here. And I'll tell you, usually they're gonna, they're most likely to happen when on these absolute values. They happen on other kinds of problems too in math. But when it equals, and there's a variable over here. So we're going to do our regular work. 2x plus 12 equals 4x. We do our two cases. And then 2x plus 12 equals negative 4x. All right? So we do this every time we write these two separate linear equations from one absolute value. It creates two different situations. Um, you want to get your x's together. You can move them to either side. I like to move them to the side. They're already kind of by themselves because it's less work. It's a little weird because they're on the left, the right side, but that's the same thing as this. So there's an answer. All right, subtract 12, uh, subtract 2x from both sides. We want to get the x's together first. 12 equals negative 6x. I'm going to divide by negative 6. Get negative 2. So x equals negative 2. It's kind of nice to write the letter on the left hand side for your final answer. So those are your answers. You might be like, great, cool, you did everything. Let's check them, okay? So we're gonna plug, we're gonna check x equals six. So we're gonna plug it back into the original equation. And everywhere we see an x, we're gonna put six in parentheses. Okay, so that's gonna be 12 plus 12. 4 times 6 is 24. That's going to be 24. Absolute value 24 is 24. And hey, it works. Cool. Let's check x equals negative 2. So we're going to plug it back into the original equation. All right. I know this is a lot of work, but you're going to have less work to do today than normal. So you have time to do it. So we're going to plug negative 2 in parentheses wherever we see the x. So that's going to be negative 4. 
uh, 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And then negative 4 plus 12 is positive 8. And then absolute value of 8 is 8 equals negative 8? No. No. That's not true. So did we mess up in our work? I mean, it's possible that you might have messed up in your work. But in this special case, if you get the number equal to negative of the number, that's probably what's happened is this right here is what we call an extraneous solution. It's a solution that you got from doing the right steps of work, but really doesn't work, okay? So on this problem right here, I'm still gonna wanna see the work where you found both of them, and then you're gonna check them to then cross that one out, and write extraneous solution next to it, okay? I still need to see it. And this other one's good still. We still have an answer. That other one's good. Um, so, there you go. Uh, you're welcome to, you know, ask me for help. But uh, this kind of shows you all the different types of problems you're going to see on your assignment today. We're just going to do monitoring progress today. No assignment. So just monitoring progress. Look at Google Classroom. Get the assignment. Go to Big Ideas. Go to Clever. Go to Big Ideas. Uh, student Dynamic ebook today. Upload your work. Upload your notes. You're uploading two things today. Okay.